This video demonstrates the operation of a heater circuit controlled by a magnetic contactor. The auxiliary contacts of the contactor have a much lower current rating than the main contacts and are used in the control circuit for holding and status indication. A control transformer is used to lower the 480 volt line voltage to 120 volts for control purposes. A three wire control circuit is used to switch power to the heating elements. With the on off switch closed, the momentary heat on push button is depressed to energize coil M of the contactor. Main power contacts M1, M2, and M3 close, energizing the heating elements at line voltage. Auxiliary contact M4 closes to hold in the contactor coil by completing a circuit around the momentary heat on push button. At the same time, auxiliary contact M5 opens to switch off the green pilot light and contact M6 closes to switch on the red pilot light. Depressing the momentary heat off push button or opening the on off switch will de-energize the coil, returning the circuit to its off state. This video demonstrates the operation of a mechanically held lighting contactor. Lighting circuits are single phase and generally rated at 120 or 277 volts. When the on button is momentarily depressed, the latch coil is energized through the normally closed clearing contact. As a result, the contactor closes and latches mechanically to close the main contacts M, lighting both banks of lamps with both circuit breakers closed. The coil clearing contacts change state, normally closed to normally open, and normally open to normally closed, alternately with a change in the contactor latching position. To unlatch the contactor, thereby turning the lamps off, the off button is momentarily depressed, unlatching the contactor to open contacts M. Since the latch and unlatch coils are not designed for continuous duty, they are automatically disconnected by the coil clearing contacts to prevent accidental coil burnout should the push button remain closed. This video demonstrates the operation of an SCR testing circuit. A DC voltage source is used for powering the circuit and two push button switches are used to latch and unlatch the SCR. Momentarily closing the on push button connects the gate to the anode, allowing current to flow from the negative terminal of the battery through the cathode gate junction, through the switch, through the bulb and back to the battery's positive terminal. This gate current should cause the SCR to latch on allowing current to go directly from cathode to anode without further triggering through the gate. Momentarily opening the normally closed off push button interrupts the current flow to the SCR and bulb. The light turns off and remains off until the SCR is triggered back into conduction. If the bulb lights at all times, this is an indication that the SCR is shorted. If the bulb fails to light when the SCR is triggered into operation, this is an indication that the SCR is faulted open. This video demonstrates the operation of a thermal overload relay circuit with manual reset only. A thermal overload relay uses a heater element connected in series with the motor supply. Current flowing from the motor contactor to the motor passes through the motor overload heaters, 
one per phase, which are mounted in the overload relay block. Each thermal overload relay consists of the main overload block, which houses the contacts, a tripping mechanism with reset button, and interchangeable heaters sized for the motor. When the current exceeds the rated value for a long enough time, the overload contact is tripped open. This contact is connected in series with the starter M coil, so when the contact opens, the starter coil is de-energized. In turn, the starter's main power contacts open to disconnect the motor from the line. With manual reset only, an operator must press the reset button to restart the system. This setting is commonly used for safety reasons to ensure the system will not restart on its own. This video demonstrates the operation of a thermal overload relay circuit with automatic reset only. The operating principle is basically the same as the manual reset only. The difference being, with automatic reset, after the heater element cools, the system will be automatically restarted. This is useful when the system is in a remote location, making it difficult to manually restart, and automatic restart is unlikely to create a dangerous condition. Watch the normally closed overload contact reset automatically after the overload. This video demonstrates the operation of an IEC motor control schematic as compared to the equivalent NEMA schematic. The IEC starter schematic has power terminals marked 135 and 246, corresponding function to L1, L2, L3, and T1, T2, and T3 on the NEMA starter schematic. The terminals of the IEC auxiliary contacts are marked with a two-digit number. Terminals that belong together are marked with the same location digit, the first digit. The second digit, called the function digit, identify the function of each contact in this IEC schematic. The numbers 1, 3, and 1, 4 represent an auxiliary contact. The number 1 identifies that this is the first contact in the sequence. The numbers 3 and 4 identify this is as normally open contact. The numbers 2, 1, and 2, 2 represent another auxiliary contact. The number 2 identifies that this is the second contact in the sequence. The numbers 1 and 2 identify this as a normally closed contact. 